Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing some of my sexiest date night fragrances. If I were getting ready for a really romantic Valentine's Day evening, this is what I would wear. Of course, it always depends on the occasion. I think the time, the place, the overall mood, the vibe, restaurant. I like to take everything into consideration, but this is my go-to current rotation when I'm looking to grab a fragrance that is a bit more seductive, when I'm trying to lure compliments. This first fragrance is relatively new to my collection, but it was love at first sniff. And I have to be honest with you, I have never worn this on a date yet, but I'm really excited to. The next time I go out with my husband, this is the fragrance that I'm going to be wearing. I've definitely worn it around the house. I've worn it for myself, but it is intoxicating. It truly does live up to its name. It's from Initio. It's called Addictive Vibration. Listen to these notes and use your imagination. It has apple, orange blossom, honey, vanilla, and musk. The honey gives it a touch of warmth, a touch of sweetness, and then it has the apple, gives it a little fruity juiciness, and then the vanilla and musk in the dry down is just incredibly feminine and romantic. You get this delicious burst, it almost smells like candy. It has this burst of sweetness right away, and it's powerful, like a bubblegum sugar rush, but then it just sort of melts and oozes and you get that warmth from the honey. It smells like dessert. It smells exactly how I would want to smell on a date night, edible, delicious, and so addicting, truly. You smell it and it just sort of lures you in and you don't want to stop smelling it. I feel like maybe this is just me because I've just discovered this brand. It's kind of a hidden gem because it's so niche. I don't think you're ever going to be out and feel like you're wearing the same thing as everybody else. It feels very luxurious, creme de la creme, like you are one of one. I don't know why anybody hasn't been hitting me over the head to smell this fragrance because it's that incredible. This to me is one of those wow instant standouts must have in your collection. One fragrance that I would maybe wear for the same occasion would be Hedonist by Victoria Minya. And you know I had the exact same reaction when I discovered that fragrance. They're really not the same in any way, but they are both very opulent. You can tell by this bottle. They have that warmth, that ooey gooey, delicious sweetness, and then it's sweet, but not too sweet. You know, honey has that natural sweetness. It's not sickeningly sweet. It's not going to give you a headache. It doesn't smell adolescent. In fact, it's the opposite. I smell these fragrances and to me, it just smells like a woman, a very wealthy woman who is just dripping in diamonds and pearls and has never heard no in her life. That's what comes to mind whenever I smell them. They just smell expensive. The Hedonist has keynotes of rum, bergamot, peach, jasmine, orange flower, osmanthus, tobacco, vetiver, cedarwood, and vanilla. I receive questions sometimes on blotter cards and what side you're supposed to spray the fragrance. There really isn't a wrong answer. Whenever I went through fragrance training at Nordstrom, the department store, we learned to spray it on the thin side. And these actually come from when you used to dip the blotter paper into different essences. And then you would smell the small side because this is what you would use for dipping. So that's why it has that small side. Some you'll find tapered, others you won't. When I worked at the Tom Ford counter in fragrance training, we learned to spray a card and you would just slide it underneath your nose. So it's just, it's paper. It's the same paper on both sides. You can spray either side. There is no right or wrong answer. It makes me laugh when people comment, she's smelling the wrong side. The reason I often do the smaller side is also because I'm spraying at least 10 fragrances, sometimes more in a video. And if I spray the smaller side, then it's less overwhelming and I won't go nose blind as quickly. So if you're ever out looking for fragrances and you wanna not overwhelm yourself, you should probably stick to three to five anyways, but I would spray the smaller side of the blotter card and don't spray the big side. One of my favorite fragrance discoveries ever because I really stumbled upon it. I just happened to be shopping around the scent bar in LA and I noticed the fragrance bottle because this is such a standout and I went to smell it and I fell in love. It is so incredible. So many delicious notes in there. It smells like all of my favorite things combined. Intoxicating, a little sweet. It has that warmth to it. I think it must be the peach. I think the peach, vanilla, and musk is always a killer combination. It's sensual, it's romantic, it's seductive without being too in your face, overly sexy. 
You really couldn't put a dull fragrance in a bottle like this with the rhinestone so that it sparkles whenever you look at it. I mean, the bottle, the decoration, it looks over the top and this fragrance is over the top. It's not shy, it is confident, getting really dressed up and going somewhere fabulous. This is like a New Year's Eve date night. Of course, Valentine's Day, a birthday dinner type of fragrance. When you want to be center of attention, this is the fragrance. Next, we have another new favorite. This is the latest launch from Creed. It's called Queen of Silk. And this name and this bottle has such a buildup. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but this is one of the most incredible fragrances, not just from Creed, but in my entire fragrance collection. They really killed it with this launch. It's an amber floral fragrance. Keynotes include osmanthus, saffron, and magnolia, passion fruit, tuberose, patchouli, oud, myrrh, ambroxan, cedarwood, Madagascar vanilla, musk, and incense. I love a fruity floral. I love an amber floral. And you don't have to wait for the vanilla or the passion fruit, which is exactly what I want. The perfect amount of sweetness. It's a little fruity, a little floral but it just smells so sophisticated. There's so much going on. It's a really complex fragrance, but I would say if you like the idea of passion fruit, vanilla, and musk, you will probably really like this. It almost feels a bit too fancy. I would say this could be a bridal fragrance. It could be a black tie gala, something really incredible and extravagant where you want to smell like royalty. You are pulling out all of the best. This would be that type of fragrance. It's just a, a wow. So of course, perfect for a Valentine's Day date as well. If you're planning to rock a bold red lip or maybe a red dress for Valentine's Day, or if you just really like cherry, then I recommend Rouge Smoking from BDK. I remember hearing about this fragrance for the longest time. I saw it in so many different thumbnails and I knew it was probably really good. I don't know what held me back for so long because Again, as soon as I tried this, love at first sniff. It is such an incredible cherry fragrance. Almost reminds me a bit of cherry root beer. It's very feminine and very unique, especially for a cherry fragrance. I think for a long time, a lot of the new cherry releases were all Tom Ford Lost Cherry dupes. Don't get me wrong, I love Tom Ford Lost Cherry, but this gives us something different. It's not so literal. There are so many other things going on in the fragrance that it still smells one of a kind. I wore this to a holiday party last year. I've worn this out and about quite a few times. I always enjoy wearing it. I think because I love it so much, I always look forward to wearing it. It feels like a special occasion whenever I treat myself to wearing this fragrance. I don't think I've ever received a compliment yet wearing this perfume, which kind of surprises me. But it's not like people always mention my fragrance anytime I'm around them or anytime I leave the house. So when a fragrance does draw compliments, you always take note. I think maybe I just need to keep wearing it and see if it stirs any conversations because it feels like it should be a compliment getter. It smells incredible. It's a law of averages. I just need to keep wearing it. I'm sure one day somebody will compliment it. Even if they don't, I don't care because I love wearing this so much. It makes me feel super feminine, super beautiful, super pretty. And whenever I'm getting dressed up and I'm going somewhere really special, I don't know if maybe it's the red juice, it just stands out. It stands out among all of my other fragrances and my eyes just always catch that fragrance and I think, ooh, okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna wear tonight. Another one of my favorites that reminds me of a bold red lip or a power outfit is Orchidée Rouge from Soradora. This is one of the most interesting fragrances, one of my favorites in my entire collection, and it is very romantic. It was inspired by family trips to the islands in the Indian Ocean. Keynotes include vanilla, heliotrope, almond milk, benzoin, and rum. It's a little powdery, a little exotic. It is so difficult to put this fragrance in a box because it smells a little bit like vanilla and almond. But then there's something else there. It's so different. If I say vanilla almond, I think a lot of people are probably gonna think, oh, something like vanilla sex. And this is so different, it's unique. It always reminds me a little bit of a really luxurious body butter, as if you've been on vacation for weeks and you've a bit just been spending all of your time in the Maldives and you've developed a really beautiful tan so you're layering moisturizer on bronze skin and you smell a little bit like vanilla 
a little bit like exotic spices. It smells like vacation. It's vacation in a bottle. If I'm in the mood to wear something a little spicier, then Amouage Guidance is the perfect choice. This, to me, smells so much like cinnamon apple or fresh baked apple pie. It is incredible. One of my favorite launches of 2023. I was so late to the party talking about this fragrance. I remember it was sold out for a long time. Everybody was raving about it. I finally got a chance to smell it towards the end of last year. It was a bit of a slow burn. I didn't have to have it right away. I knew I really liked it, but I just needed to think about it. I needed some time to really take it in. And the more I smelled it, the more I started to fall in love. It's a little sweet, a little incense-y, and then I smell apple. And as it dries down, I get a little vanilla, a little smooth creaminess. It's very feminine, very elegant, and the lady at the counter, whenever I purchased this, she said it is the best seller. They can't keep it in stock. Everyone's coming in talking about it. It does something to the brain where I just wanna keep smelling, keep smelling, keep smelling it. Incredible, a lot of really delicious edible notes, but very elevated. This would be a nice steakhouse date. I have another Initio fragrance here. This is called Absolute Aphrodisiac. So many people said you have to try this fragrance when I talked about Paragon and Addictive Vibration, and you're right, it's also incredible. Very vanilla forward. In fact, the last few fragrances that we're gonna talk about are very vanilla. It's described as the softness of vanilla intimately intertwined with the animal potency of musk and castorium. Hopefully that's how you pronounce that and I'm not butchering the name. This is such an incredible vanilla. It's so amazing. Definitely get vanilla and musk. They do such an incredible job naming these fragrances because this really is an absolute aphrodisiac. The first time I tried this, it reminded me a little bit of Lyra from Zerjoff. Not exact, not the same, but it just sort of reminded me of it. I think if you like Lyra, you will probably really like this. It's sensual, seductive. This is definitely date night appropriate, and it could be any date, any occasion. It's not so heavy that you would have to wear it only evening. I think you could wear this for a daytime date as well. Any place, any time, any place, as long as you are a vanilla lover, you are absolutely going to die for this. It is so good. I'm going on a trip soon and I'm taking this with me and it's going to be the only fragrance that I wear the entire time. And I can't wait. I would consider this fragrance to be the ultimate vanilla lover's vanilla. This is a true vanilla bomb fragrance. It's Spiritus Double Vanille from Guerlain. It's one of their elevated fragrances, which is now available at Neiman Marcus in store, which is amazing. For the longest time, you could only find them online. It made it really difficult because these fragrances are very expensive. And if you place a Guerlain makeup order, you could maybe get a little sample of one of them in your order but it was really difficult to try them. I'm not sure if it's available at Saks or other department stores. Locally, the only place I've ever seen it is Neiman Marcus, which is incredible news because that way this really popular fragrance can gain and maintain its popularity. It's a vanilla with status. I feel like it might seem like a boring choice, but I can't help myself. It's incredible and the truth is it's just better. It's better than a lot of the other fragrances out there. It has rum, cedarwood, it's a dark moody vanilla. Not an overly sweet gourmand. It's date night, it's sensual, it's elegant, it's femme fatale, it's perfect. This is night out vanilla. It's one of the best fragrances in my collection. I find myself saving it and savoring this bottle because I just don't wanna go through it. I do have a little dent starting to form, but it's special. I don't want anyone forgetting about this fragrance. If you own this, if it's in your collection, I promise you don't need anything else. You don't need other vanillas if you have this. It's the one. There are going to be a million other vanilla fragrances launched. None of them are going to be better than this. Just masterful. And Guerlain is one of those fragrance houses. I mean, they are so classic. They really know what they're doing. I, so many of my favorite fragrances come from Guerlain, but especially this line. I recently tried Oud Nude has been on my list for a long time. I haven't tried the Fev Gourmand yet. They didn't have it at my local store. I cannot wait to try that one. If you've tried Fev Gourmand, I believe that's the name, 
Please let me know, am I missing out? Do I have to try a sample? And my final two fragrance picks are even more annoying, but I can't help myself. The lineup is the lineup, okay? I'm just sharing my favorites. This is what I love to wear. These are two of my all-time favorites. What makes this annoying is that they're really difficult to get your hands on. Even I ordered my baby cat from YSL from eBay. I read a lot of reviews and people said it was a trusted seller and it came in great shape. It smells incredible, but I'm not sure if this was ever launched in the US and it may still be available on eBay. There was one seller who I think was just doing the Lord's work and shopping for everybody, making sure they could get their hands on YSL Baby Cat. I don't know why you would not mass produce this fragrance. It is so nice. It's a crowd pleaser. It's delicious. It's vanilla. It's amazing. It has this suede leather component that really elevates the fragrance. Vanilla and suede is how I would describe this fragrance. It is amazing, intoxicating. I don't have anything else that smells similar. I don't really know what else to even compare it to. Just in case this ever does become widely available, I want you to be the first to know it's amazing, it is well worth it, and it is definitely worth seeking out. If I had to choose something that I would put in the same category, it would probably be Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. Also has a similar vanilla, not smoky, it's not smoky and it's not tobacco, but there's just this leathery note. That would be the only other fragrance that would be comparable, but they're very different. Luby Rouge could actually make this list. I mean, it's an insane fragrance, but if I had to choose one over the other, I might go with Baby Cat. And I have heard rumors, I think people have commented to me and I've seen it commented that this might be coming back, which fingers crossed, this is the Kayali The Wedding from The Wedding Collection, Silk Santal 36. I gifted my husband, I gifted him. <laughs> I put it in his collection. The velvet version, is it the Velvet Santal? In the black bottle. This is the more feminine of the two and it is outstanding. One of the best fragrances, maybe the best fragrance launch of 2023. It's that good. Keynotes include sparkling champagne, white freesia, pink praline, lush nectarine, sandalwood, and sugared musk. I do think this would be a great bridal fragrance. You might be thinking, well, if it's a wedding day fragrance, that's not really sexy date night. This is more of a date night with your husband or an anniversary, maybe a first date, but it's just my kind of fragrance. It just speaks to me. I feel like it was made for me. It was actually made for Mona, <laughs> but I feel like kindred spirits with her since she created this for her wedding day. And I love it so much. It's reminds me of something that I would want to create for my own wedding day if I could. It is definitely sparkling and vibrant and happy and pretty. And you spritz this and you wear this fragrance and you just feel so beautiful. Angelic, ethereal, such an incredible fragrance. Hands down the best fragrance from Kayali. And I cannot believe it's limited. What are they doing? I feel like they must be playing with us. Maybe they were testing the waters to see how popular they would be because everybody needs to try this. It might not be the sexiest, most seductive fragrance on the list, but it's a center of attention, you are just well-loved type of fragrance. It's a confidence booster, all eyes are on you. You're really dressed up, you wanna feel your best. This is the perfect fragrance to wear insatiable it's amazing can't put my finger on the note maybe it's the praline there's something in there that is so addicting that you just cannot stop smelling it whatever it is i think it might be the praline because i get a similar feeling whenever i sp smell bond new york greenwich village it's another one of those fragrances it has praline that it just it does something to me where i cannot stop smelling it it smells so nice this has that, like a fairy princess fragrance. Amazing. 
And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing about my go-to list. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you. You have the best taste and recommendations. So if you have any go-to date night fragrances, if you've tried anything new lately, if you have any exciting Valentine's Day plans, drop me a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.